So we can all just press got it. Hi everyone, my name is Amanda and I am the moderator and today we are showcasing your psychic tarot friends. We have two psychics on the panel. First, the psychic for lovers known as Pastor Moses is a spiritual pastor. She's a psychic tarot card reader, clairvoyant, claircognizant, intuitive and dream interpreter. With over 30 plus years of experience, she's worked as a psychic online with Keen, Live Advice, Five star psychic advice. Her website is psychicforlovers.com. She does private readings and her YouTube channel is Psychic F O U R Lovers. Janet is the second psychic on our panel with over 40 plus years of experience. She has been on over 100 plus TV shows such as David Letterman, Sally Jesse Raphael, Regis and Kelly, The Joe Franklin Show, Joy Dayhow, and multiple radio shows. She's a psychic, Claire. Boyan, Claire Sentinel, Aura, Aura Reader, Medium, Picture Reader, Palmistry, Handwriting, Cat Psychic, and Healer. Her contact info is BKLYN, Jim, G Y M, 123 at gmail.com. There are two options to get a personal reading. The first option is Janet for $5 per question. The second option is also Janet for $5 per question, plus a free bonus. Psychic for Lovers will answer the same question free of charge if you subscribe to our YouTube channel. A general Pastamosis will pick a pile to see what's going on in people's love life for the rest of the story. Would you mind starting Pastamosis? Sure. You're not going to mention the topics and the tidbits yet before oh, I start? Oh, yes. Yeah. So today yes. we are doing topics, which is the psychic ability, the gut feeling, and the intuition. And today's celebrity tidbit will be about Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck. Pastor Wilson, would you mind starting with the general reading? Yes, yeah, sure. It's a pick a pile. There's pile number one. Yes, two and three. Okay. So let's start with you, I guess, if it, unless somebody else is wanting to pick a pile. Why don't you pick a number? Um, I would say two. Okay. Remember I told you earlier that I thought you was going to say two and you had said three? Yes. And now you said two. See, I knew you was going to say two. <laughs> Okay, so this is just a general uh, reading on the energy around love life. So basically, this is the general. So we're going to see what's coming up. So you pick pile number two. Let's see what's going on. Oh, I am... I must have miscounted. So we're going to take another cut from the top. Here we go. All righty. So what it tells me that it feels like a, a offer is going to come to whoever picks file number two, just in general, because not specific to you, but it feels like they're going to get an offer. Um, Someone is going to show interest in them. And this person who shows interest in you, you're going to be not sharing that with your, whoever your significant other, your, uh, the person you're with, um, you're just not going to share it. You're going to keep it to yourself because you feel like, you know, it might threaten their security. You know what I mean? Might make them insecure. So it feels like someone is going to be interested in you and, and show that interest and you'll keep it to yourself. It's going to give you, it's going to make you happy because you're going to feel like you're going to feel beautiful. You're going to feel wanted. You're going to feel desired. So um, that will make you happy because it feels like in your relationship, that person is not telling you that you're beautiful and you're special. They're not making you feel special anymore. Like they did in the beginning. So it feels like that offer when that person shows attention, that attention is going to make you feel really uh, beautiful and, and wanted and desired and, and special. So it feels like um, from that, I feel like 
you're going to feel the sense of, okay, I'm not going to do anything with this because I do care about the person I'm with, you know, um, because now it feels like you're working towards, you know, your goal to financially become financially stable and things are happening fairly quickly. And you're surprised about how quickly your finance is improving. So it feels like um, this is going to be something that you'll get used to as time go on, but it just feels like all this stuff coming in at one time. It's surprising to you. So, in, and then I feel like um, be aware if you do actually let the person know, your significant other, the person you're dealing with, about somebody showing attention, maybe you might try to want to get attention and just letting them know he's not the only person. Um, if you do say that, he or she, if you do say that, um, that to them, that somebody's interested in it, it'll cause a fight. So try not to do that. It will definitely cause a fight because that person will definitely feel insecure and then thinking you want somebody else. And, and it also just shows me that, you know, just to keep things at peace, just keep it to yourself because I feel the love is there and I feel like y'all two will grow, especially if the person don't feel insecure about losing you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so next we are going to go in with Janet and she will be speaking about colors. So first we are going to be starting with migraine, the eye and the hay fever. Would you mind starting Janet? Okay, because I want to tell everyone if you're feeling off color that day and parts of your body do, need some color attention. And that's why I'm going to give you the colors that will help you come back to a better mood. So what did you want to ask about? Okay, so we can get started with the head. Okay, if you have a headache and you take a piece of cloth like the, or a handkerchief or you focus on the color blue, blue will help you come out of the headache uh, in, in just a few seconds, a few minutes. Blue. Okay, and then next we are going to go into the eyes. Okay, now the eyes like the color turquoise. Even if you have a ring that's turquoise stone and your eyes are tired or they feel you can't focus, just look at the turquoise stone. Something about turquoise makes the eyes function better. It's a vibration thing. Mm, okay, and then lastly, we'll go into hay fever. If you have hay fever, uh, the, uh, wait a minute, the, the color for that is a royal blue, not like a medium blue, but a royal blue. And that is the best color for that. Okay, Janet, thank you. So now we are going to move into the topics today. First, we are going to get started on the psychic ability. Pastor Moses, would you mind start starting that out, please? Yes, everyone, everyone is born with psychic ability, whether they know it or not. Um, so some people are very clear that they uh, know they have psychic abilities. Um, and some people think that they don't have a lick of psychic ability, but God, a universe, the highest source, whoever you call your high source, they, they, it's innate, it, we are born with it, it's within us. So one of the most common psychic abilities that everyone should be able to relate to is what we call intuition, our gut feeling. So the intuition, like if you feel something and you know in your gut, it, you'll usually feel it in your gut or your solar plex and it'll say to you that, hey, something's not right here. Maybe you, you know, walking down a block and you're about to turn and you feel a certain thing say, mm, I don't think I should go down that block. Something's not right. And then you go, you don't go down that block and you find out later, maybe there was a shooting, you know what I mean? Or, or something happened, you know, really bad at that block. Maybe, you know, a car went into uh, the building that you know you were the store that you thought you was going to go that you were going to go in you know so your gut feeling like if your gut feeling tell you like hey you're in a relationship and you're saying something makes me feel like he's not being honest with me he's not being truthful so when a person when a person does that then i'm sorry when you feel that then that tells you that hey something is not 
right. You know, I should pay attention to what my gut is telling me. Maybe I should just really, really investigate what I'm feeling. So your gut feeling, your intuition, pay attention to it. You pay attention to it. So that's your psyche telling you something. And you should listen to your gut feeling more than anybody else. You should listen to your own gut feeling. Janet, you want to talk more about that, please? Yes, because you know, the psychic ability, the strongest psychic ability starts in the first chakra, which is your base chakra. We'll go over another time, but it is the need for the protection of your self safety. And so when you, when, when you sense danger or problems, that's all first chakra stuff that somebody, even animals first chakra safety, and it makes you feel that um, you are, um, you, you know, like if, if there is danger. So the psychic ability is real strong as a baby even. They just know things psychically. If you think about how a baby knows a lot, you're going to see that they protect themselves. And then as you get older and you're not uh, brainwashed by some religion or something that's trying to change your, you from thinking for yourself or feeling for yourself you'll see that your psychic ability will go wait a minute that's not right but I guess I have to cooperate with everyone but something inside me says this is not quite right oh wait a minute I also feel today there's something wrong somebody forgot to do something and I feel danger and then they find out somebody left the door unlocked or somebody left something of danger you might not know what exactly the danger is unless you uh, you don't know, practice your psychic ability more, but you'll still, if you have no practice at all, you still should be able to sense danger. That's the first thing that psychic ability is there for you to protect yourself and the others around you. Hi, I, I, I agree, yes. So now we are going to move into our celebrity tidbit about Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck. Um, just a little backstory about them. They dated and broke up in 2004. Then they recently reconnected and now they are restarting their relationship. So my first question is for Pastor Moses. When they first dated, how was their relationship? Okay, so so J-Lo. Okay, so when J-Lo and Ben Affleck I would say Ben Affleck, when they first dated, how was their relationship? Okay, let's see. Okay, I feel like... Um, when they first was dating, she was worried a lot about money. For some reason, she was worried about her status, her financial situation, her money, her stability. So it was a, a lot of concern about money around her when she first, um, when they first dated. I'm not sure if that's how long she's been out since then, but I feel like she was definitely concerned. That was her primary focus. She also, I don't know, um, maybe you could check that later or maybe you know. I don't know if she had any children, but I feel like she wanted to be a mother. I can feel energy around being a mother. And um, do you know, um, Amanda, if she had any children or did she have a female daughter? No, I don't think she had any children at that time. It was later on that she had children with Mark Anthony, I believe. Okay, does she have a, a, a little girl? Does she have a girl? She does, yes. Okay. She, I think she has a boy and a girl. Okay, there's something around a, a girl energy, like she wanted a daughter or something like that. So I just can feel like she wanted, it was like wanting to be a mother. I can feel that mother wanting to have, uh, want to be a mother. I also feel like at uh, times they had a good time. I think they enjoyed each other. They had a lot of fun. Um, it feels like um, there was a strong sexual energy with them too as well. I feel like um, he was extremely attracted to her really, really, really attracted to her. So he really, really loved her and wanted to be with her. Um, but again, I feel like, um, I don't, for whatever reason, it's a money issue was going on. And I feel like that was one of the main issues. And then also I feel like not being open. Um, I can feel like um, there was a, 
uh, a situation where they weren't being open and they were fighting about dishonesty or some lies. And I think it was coming from Ben, but it feels like there was some dishonesty and some lies and not and some deception. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why um, things probably didn't work out very well. But um, it, it was it, it was a, 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 a good and a bad relationship. It had its good points and its bad points, you know. Thank you. So a quick question for Janet. When Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck were dated, how was their relationship? Well, when they, they first met, they both thought it was too good to be true. They both were very attracted to each other. But and and she wanted someone that really saw all the effort she made to be this very special girl. And it was, she put a lot of work into it and thought she was 100% working at 100% of just being this real talented person. And she was very dedicated. She says from Ben that he was somewhat skeptical about a lot of, you know, minor things or things that she didn't really, it didn't really matter to her. What mattered to her is she needed to see the admiration in his eyes. And he did do that. But under that, eventually, she got to see that his skepticism about, you know, money, like she said, and other uh, things was making her feel like, oh, maybe he doesn't really love me. And I need love. One thing I need, I work too hard to have somebody. I want to really love someone that wants somebody that, that does all this wonderful stuff I do and it will appreciate it. But as his skepticism, as his skepticism sneaked out, <laughs> It, she started to kind of pull away. Yeah. That was it. Thank you, Janet. So next we are going back into our general readings and Pastor Moses will pick a pile on what she sees going on in people's love life for the rest of the spring. Okay, Janet, can you pick a number one or two? Or one or three? Sorry, one or three. <laughs> I'll take one. Okay, cool. Thank you. Hmm. All right, remember this, this applies, it can apply to uh, some of us, but it won't apply to everybody. So what I feel is that there's a relationship, I feel like, um, sorry, well, there's a relationship that's no longer going on. I feel like there's a distance going on. I feel like the, they're, they're not together anymore. And I feel like um, it's making a person really question their, um, their uh, self-esteem. It feels like they did a lot of work on their self-esteem to get to where they're at. And then when the relationship broke off, it feels like they question their self-esteem and they feel like they have to start rebuilding their self-esteem again. And what they need to know is that self-esteem is self. So you have to do it, to, you have to bring that to yourself. You have to make yourself feel better. But it feels like they're, they're looking for outside external, external energy to make them feel better. So it says that it makes me feel like that uh, your self-esteem can build up once you decide to build your self-esteem and feel better about yourself. And it feels like, you know, these two were very well. It feels like the male energy was more emotional and the female energy was more um, taking care of business. It feels like the female energy likes to take care of business. It's more like a business type person, want to do things, take care of business. The male was more emotional. And it feels like there was some trust issue going on with that. It caused a lot of confusion because of trust issues. Um, and it feels like um, there were like questions and spying and things of that nature. And it feels like financially there were some issues around finance. The finances wasn't coming in as well. The money wasn't, the money wasn't, it's like he wasn't bringing in the money the way he's supposed to or stop doing the way he's supposed to. And then I feel like then the male energy ended up leaving. So I feel like the male energy leaving. So they're showing me that that's what's going on around number two. All right, thank you. So next we are going to go back into the colors with Janet. Okay, but I wanna say her reading was excellent. It was so close to everything I'm going through. What a, what a great reading, thank you. 
Oh, you're welcome. You know, I set these up. This, you know, like how we talk about how phenomenal psychic stuff. I set these up way before we started, and I didn't even know you were going to pick number one, right? But remember Amanda, right? What did I say, Amanda, right? I said, Amanda, mm -hmm. you got to pick a number, right? And I said, yeah. what number? In my head, I, said, I thought she was going to say two, right? And she said three. I said, okay, well, three. I'm, and then she picked two when we did the thing, and it came out kind of like, was it close to you too, uh, Amanda? Yes. I'm sorry? in many ways okay so you're going in and out okay cool all right so it's, it's so phenomenal how they do it they didn't even know you're going to pick that right or well, i didn't know yeah. <laughs> okay so okay. janet Sorry. is going to go into her colors we are okay. going to talk about thyroid heart and kidney okay so the color for thyroid is red that will help stimulate the the thyroid to uh, be in more action and then what was the second one the... so it's heart oh the heart uh wait i thought you said okay so uh, thyroid heart and kidney oh yeah right right sorry it's okay uh, <laughs> I, I, i'm still thinking about how great her reading was <laughs> the heart <laughs> <laughs> the heart conditions, any heart conditions are calmed down with green and pink. If you know anyone that has a heart problem, wear green or pink around them or make give a food that's green and pink. I don't, you know, it'll, it just really calms the heart and helps it feel strong. And okay. these are, yeah. And the third one was? Um, kidney. Kidney. Okay. For the kidneys, you need the color orange and yellow. Mm -hmm. And that gives energy to the kidneys. If I want to say that when I'm doing uh, readings in front of a whole big group of people, and I, when someone uh, will raise their hand or ask for a question, and I see what they're wearing, I know right away, just from their color, where they're in a little discomfort. And so I tell them, you know, you're having, you you feel this way today, but, and they go, yes, exactly. And how do you know I have asthma or hay fever? Or how do you know all this? But it's, it's in their color. They wear, they wear, they'll wear a color that they'll naturally find themselves going to their closet to wear to help them feel calm for that condition. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, so psychically, you just get it. That I try to figure out how do I know it, and then I learned. Wow, that's amazing. Well, it, but you know, colors have vibrations, and vibrations can be can be measured. And the vibration that's why when people look at a rainbow, they feel good. They feel that they, you know, there's something they'll pull out from that rainbow. Each person will see a different color around that rainbow because they'll take out from that rainbow the energy that they need and once you see the chart like a music chart even of the vibrations of each color you know that those vibrations affect those organs of the body it's really scientific yes yes because like we when we talk about uh, manifestation um i tell people to like get a if you're talking about they want more money or you know what i mean for the green candle if i if you want a job right. and money get a brownie for for you know for um the brown will be more stable so you can have the job long term you know and the green is to bring the money so we tell them to do right. that um and that again the vibrations like you said and just focusing on that color and that vibration. So I agree 100% that color is very important. At our know? psychic fairs, we had, I had a, a kit with about eight different color candles and with a paper in it that said, if you burn this candle, you'll attract what, what you need to attract because of the vibration. It's, you know, like you don't know how it works, but it works from the vibration that you're sending out that you're not even aware you're sending out. That's why money attraction, which you are an expert at, and 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 everything that the 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 money we also sold got all the herbs. There's herbs for money. There's herbs. There's herbs that also have the same effect uh, for energies that will send out a vibration. And we had little herb things of money herbs, love herbs, you know, different herbs, safety, protection. 
and all those herbs worked. The people came back and said, wow, that, it really worked. I, tell me your stories. And I'd love to hear the stories. And so vibrations work through color, through nature. There's a lot of ways that, and the candles especially, candles are very powerful, especially the healing candles. By the way, every, every um, night at eight o'clock at night from eight to 12, all the healers will do all their healing on people that you request. If you say, um, I, I'd like to send a healing to this person or that, and you and they light healing candles and they send out healing with their vibrations to that person. And it's beautiful, beautiful stories from healings. And it's done from eight to midnight. Wow. No, I agree because when I used to work with you, when you had your psychic fear and I was one of the psychics working at the psychic fear, um, I remember that you did have those herbs and whatnot in the candle. And I love the herbs, you know, the money herb and the, and the love herb, you know, to attract money, to attract uh, love. I love those herbs. I, you, I remember I got quite a few of them from you. <laughs> and yeah. they work. <laughs> they work. <laughs> yeah, they, they really yeah, I got both of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the best so herbs, I, if, I know mm -hmm. this might be off, but one of the best herbs is uh, sage. If you feel that there's uh, a bad, a bad spirit around no bad spirit can live in the atmosphere of sage and it could be an essential oil it could be in an herb it could be in any uh, uh, uh thing that you you light up and and, and smoke whatever but no they, they prove scientifically now that see i went to proof for everything because i go i can't believe all this stuff you know and <laughs> the that they prove scientifically that anything negative which goes in a different direction Positive energy goes in one direction and it's like a, a river. Positive energy flows and then negativity goes like in reverse, like a river going upstream. So you you get what you want when you're more positive. And the sage, the sage would just knock out anything that's not positive and it cannot exist in that area. So if anybody's scared of anything, just you know, put sage around and you'll see that it'll clear, it'll clear up the whole atmosphere. No, oh, okay. And I'm totally opposite where you always have to get scientific thing or you like to have proof. I, I just like believe that there's things outside of what we can prove, you know? So I'm like, okay. okay. If it's more, psychic, I'm more it. it's more psychic, I believe it. It's more psychic and crazy and don't make sense. I believe it in terms of the universe things, you know? So I'm like, okay. Yeah, I believe that. that <laughs> that's why you're Pastor Moses. And, and I... I feel like, but I gotta know. I gotta know. This is so incredible. I gotta know. And when, even when I was little, I said, "How does TV work? How do they get all these little people in a little box from way far away?" <laughs> and, you know, like I had to know. <laughs> <laughs> now that makes sense. I mean, and then I just had the knowing. I just said, "Oh, it that, that works. It feels right." So you know, so I, that's why I think I got clear cognates. Clear cognates. Because I have a knowing, I just know. So I don't really need proof. I just know that if this is what it feels like, or this is what I see, I believe it. It's coming from the universe. Because it yeah. can't be proven. That's one of the things with the scientists. Sometimes they can't prove things, you know? Yeah, but so, scientists yeah. are restricted. A lot of them are restricted. Exactly. We have to have the exactly. independent thinkers help us yes. prove it all. And so there's a yes. whole bunch of books about people who said, well, I I'm not doing it this scientific way. And let me show it to you on, um, from our, our way. And that's how I learned how color affects you, how all these things affect you, how your air affects you and, yes. and how thoughts yes. affect you. And yes. like you, you are, uh, you see, you have a lot of wisdom and you're very, very spiritual and that keeps you honest. And when you're honest, this, the world will only give you truth. They will not they will not try to deceive you. Deception only comes from people that are, are motivating to deceive. But when you, you do everything the way you do it and I do it, the way we, 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 you explain how we do it, that's mm -hmm. showing you that everything comes through from a higher level, a higher power. And because you, you're, you're not manipulating anybody, you get wisdom, you get color, you get everything you want, you get answers. That's why you're so good. Like in, in, in 10 cards, you, you spotted every possible problem a person has in one blow mm, thank you for that but I you know also, you so much I, i'm thrilled I to be near you, you too. i really appreciate you too so much 
And but we're, you know, what's important is again, you have to be a truth seeker. I'm a truth seeker. I like the truth seeker. Yeah. So that's important for you to go deeper than what people tell you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We just go why what our parents tell us and don't go deeper. Like if they give you religion and you don't go deeper and say, okay, well, how is this religion worked for me? You know what I mean? Instead of just mm -hmm. taking it because it was passed down. You know what I mean? Instead of just saying, let me see how that works for me as an individual and look deeper into it. Then you could start seeing the higher, you know, going and tapping into your higher source. You know what I mean? Because you're going deeper. You're not just being, you're not just doing a rehearsal. You know what I'm trying to say? Or People just pay. being narrow-minded and believing yeah. everything. You're allowed yeah. to be thinking for yourself. And you're exactly. allowed to be a thinker, thinker, yes. But I believe in religion because it gives a piece. I love it. I love the churches. I love all that because. When you go there, it's people who kind of want to be good and they want some ideas of, of doing things where they could be a good person. And that's how I see it. I don't have to believe what they say about certain things, but I, I believe that I like being with people that, that want to be good. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> okay. 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 I understand. I'm sorry, Amanda. You can move on. <laughs> we just oh, yeah, it. You're going to move on into the topic, which is gut feelings. Uh, no, we did gut feeling, sweetie. We did gut feeling and intuition. What's the second one? So intuition and gut feeling. Yes, we did that. And the next one? We did the abilities and now we're doing the gut feeling. No, we did intuition and gut feeling. You have intuition, gut feeling. You got mindfulness and you got deja vu. Was it deja vu? What was the other one? The no, it was one? psychic ability that we just spoke about. Yes. Right. Okay. Psychic ability is what we say. Everybody has psychic ability. And how they have it is they, they dreams. Thank you. Okay. We got dreams and we got mindfulness. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So we're going to do dreams and then we'll do, actually, let's do mindfulness first. Okay. And then we'll do dreams. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so when we talk about um, mindfulness, it's something like we just, me and Janet was talking about, you know, um, basically when people have, you know, their conscious mind is like um, that they, they, they focus on the energy is focused on like one thing, you know, some people say you're stubborn, you're closed minded, right? I mean, I'm sorry, right, Janet, you're stubborn, yeah. you're closed minded, you, you know, but you are more of an independent thinker. You're not really like we talked about, you focus on your energy on one way because that feels right to you. You know what I mean? What everybody else, you know, you're the different person. You know what I mean? You're the person that everybody like look at you and point at you because you might wear different clothes or you have all these jewelries or something different. You're different because your mind is set on certain things. And, and because your mind is set on certain things, a lot of times that is you um, listening to your higher self. You know what I mean? And like Janet said, inventing things, you know, you create new things. You, you, um, you follow what your gut tells you. You follow what you feel. You don't go by just... Um, what everybody else says, you don't, you're not the lamb, you know, following everybody or the sheep, sorry, you're not the sheep following everybody. You know what I mean? So you kind of have your own mind up made up because this is what, you know, is your instinct is telling you what your feelings is telling you. And you're going for what you, what you, what you want. And that's how you start creating and manifesting things and bringing things to yourself too, by focusing your energy on that specific thing and put a lot of energy on that so mindfulness is very very important too and that's one of your um psychic abilities because that's the topic psychic abilities so that's one of your psychic abilities that we all have janet tell us a little bit more about mindfulness well mindfulness is what you decide how you're going to be for yourself for example, I always said the one thing I like the most in my life is that I can be comfortable and take a warm bath and and just have a nice, easy life, you know, of comfort. And then I, when I learned from a higher person, a teacher that said, uh, well, did you ever consider that if you could accept like, like even being here, you got to take a cold shower, you got to sleep on the floor. Did you ever think that the benefits of undoing your mindfulness to uh, accepting discomfort sometimes, you're going to be able to be and do a lot more things. And I go, oh, wow, I never thought of that. 
I was glad I wasn't stuck in my own mindfulness, that comfort wasn't everything, that the challenge of taking the cold shower, getting up early, walking a mile, all that stuff I never would have done ever. And But just knowing that I could change my mindfulness allowed me to do a lot more things and meet a lot more people and even run a mile, uh, five miles and and do all these things I never thought I could do because I thought comfort was the ultimate uh, even of rich people, their comfort is the ultimate. No, if you change your mindfulness, then you will have ex be able to expose yourself to so many different things and understand that discomfort can be fun. <laughs> this is true. Thank you for that, Pastor Melvis and Janet. So next, we're going to go back into our celebrity tidbits, and we're going to go back into Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck and talk about how did they get back to the point of dating. Would you mind I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you really well. It got a little muffled. Say it again. Um, so we're going to speak about Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck again for a celebrity tidbit, and we're going to talk about how did they get back to the point of dating again. Okay, great. Thank you. So let's see how Jennifer and Ben Affleck get back to the point of dating again. Okay, I feel like he really missed her. I feel like he had a hard time really kind of letting her go emotionally. I feel like he still held on to her. I feel like he still loved her and he still wanted to be with her. So I feel like he really missed her. Um, even though, you know, they moved on with their lives, they, you know, married other people. Um, I feel like she was still a part of his life, you know? I feel like when he felt like he was more secure, and this is something like J Janet was saying, when he was more secure financially, I feel like when money was better and he feels like, it, you know, he felt more confident in himself, I feel like he just, it, it's almost like he just probably reached out to her and said, hey, you know, I would like to get a second chance, you know? And I feel like they were open to it. You know, they both were single, they both were, um, really open and, and interested and whatnot. And so now I feel like now, you know, because of that, they're gonna, you know, move to the next level, you know, thinking about marriage, you know, um, fantasizing about another house. I could feel like a, a nice bigger house. So I feel like they, um, they just, it just was the right time, you know? Thank you. And the same question for Janet. How did they get back to the point of dating again? What happened during their their uh, marriage was that they both they both had disappointments that they didn't expect because the love was there. It was real. It was it was true. But the, the schedules and the can't be together and they can't do this and can't do that. And a lot of things just caused so much disharmony. It was very, very hard to. It was very hard to oh, constantly be disappointed. Oh, this isn't working. That isn't working. And then everybody, you know, when you're in your bad mood, you know, you want everybody to see you in your good mood, but then your bad mood, you get judged and then you don't forget and then it hurts. And then it just builds up and builds up to say, oh, I just need relief. And I think they, they, they broke up because they just needed some relief from all the problems of a sudden schedule change. Somebody had to go here. Somebody had to go there. It wasn't a harmonious thing that they could do together and have enjoyable, loving time together as much as they needed to. The disappointments and changes uh, and the fast schedule was not, uh, they were not prepared for. But I think they both always really wished each other really loved them. And so they got back because they said, you know, I still feel love from this one. And they go, yeah, I feel love too. And the love brought them back together with a second chance to try to better manage their disappointments. It was real love. Thank you, Janet. So we are going to go back into the general readings and Pastor Moses will start with Pick a pile. What do you see going on in people's love life for the rest of the spring? Okay. Mr. Moses, would you mind starting? 
Sure, we only have pile number three. Okay, so I'm gonna do that right now. Okay. So, okay, so pile number three um, is saying that it feels like you're happy. The person's happy in general and they're just, just happy and they're working and doing what they need and love and just, just feeling pretty great, grateful about their life. I feel like in the past they had a, a, a serious relationship, you know, was kind of emotional um, and it was very serious um, to, uh, 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 and, and then I feel like um, then there was the male energy in that relationship was angry. He did not work on himself. He had um, some anger issues, unresolved issues that uh, he bring into the relationship. And because of that, he caused the relationship to, uh, to kind of um, not go so smoothly. I feel like it caused the female some hurt and pain um, because he was a little harsh with his tongue. He would say things that were not um, nice. He was not respecting her. And I feel like uh, it just kind of, um, it was just kind of hurt that he has not worked on from the past. And I feel like the, the, the relationship ended, um, well, put it this way, not even, I wouldn't say ended as much as I would say, I feel like it. Uh, the man decided that he wanted to be in, um, unfaithful. So he, become, he was unfaithful in this serious relationship. And I feel like um, the relationship ended because of that and that again, we circling back to the beginning. The person is happy, they're okay, they enjoy their life. They don't really have the need for a relationship. At this moment, they're doing what they need to do and you know, focus on their life. Okay. Thank you, Pastor Michael. So, you're welcome. But it's interesting because <laughs> I, I did have some similar experience with this. <laughs> so it's kind of <laughs> That. Especially <laughs> being the last pile as well, and you weren't, exactly. um, you didn't get to, to pick yet. It, exactly. So <laughs> we're, it kind of it, it talks about me a little bit in terms of that, yeah. you know. You know. Yes. So next, you're going back into Janet speaking about the colors. So Janet, we have menstrual fibroids and gout. Would you mind starting with the menstrual cycle? Okay. Well. For that one, uh, it is um, uh, the yellow, gold, and pink help that vibration. Yellow, gold, and pink gives relief. <laughs> Color okay, relief. Thank you. And then next is fibroids. The fibroids are, um, yeah, okay, I'm just giving. Um, they uh uh okay uh just one minute <laughs> uh that was um that was with the purple purple okay yeah fibroids were purple and then the third one was and the lastly the last one is gout Okay, yeah, gout, oh boy, that one is, um, I have it written down here. Uh, what, uh, that was a, uh, the, the blue, the, the royal blue. So Janet, can I ask you a question about these colors? Yeah. So, okay, so you're giving us the colors that we need to make, and these help us with alleviating the energy or, I'm sorry, alleviate, alleviate the pain. Does it also cure it and make it go away, or is it just a temporary fix? Uh, you, you, you get uh, discomfort in any of your organs mm -hmm. it, it, to try to tell you that you're missing something nutri nutrition-wise. Mm -hmm. When you have the proper nutrition of the body, what it needs, you will feel okay. You won't feel like you're, you're not, you need something and you don't know what it is. And most people think, well, I need something. So they go right to the sugar or right to the ice cream and right to, and they, they don't really realize that if they go 
to what their body really needs. The body's trying to tell you, I I need these things. Each 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 organ of the body needs a special food that has the nutrients in it. Like diabetics have to have B12. If they don't have, or, and vegetarians have to have B, B12 also because they don't have it in certain foods. But if you're the type of person that is eating a diet that's not enough nutrients in it, your body that day, you'll wake up with uh, more of a pain or more of a discomfort in the area where you're lacking nutrition. So even in a salad, a salad is made with all colors, green for the lettuce, uh, uh, red for the radish, and they want you to put a little purple in it. And all the little colors that make a real pretty salad will cover every all the things that you're missing in nutrition in your body. And so after you eat a salad, people always say, oh, I feel better. They think it's because they ate after lunch. But if, they, if the other person sitting next to them had a cupcake or McDonald's or some kind of stuff that didn't have that much nutrition in it, they're going to go, yeah, but I, I, don't, I don't feel like you, you know, and say, oh, I'll go along with you, but I don't feel that good. And, but they'll say, gee, the salad person feels good, but it's not just the salad. It was all the things in the salad that gave each food feeds a different organ of your body and, and for nutrition. And it's real fun to learn that. I learned all that and I loved it, but it's really, uh, it really works. And then you get all better. Okay. Okay. Well, so when you say, yes, yeah. I'm sorry. What? When? Go on. I want to ask some more questions. Is it mm -hmm. Amanda? No, I just want to yes, say, we okay, get that's very interesting because I, I understand what you mean, like all the different things make up the food. Yeah, yeah. And there are, there's just, there's super foods out there. And then there's foods that are like, eh. but I mean, we were, we were having, uh, we found that like even people that had HIV and AIDS, all they had to do is have a thing called bitter melon, which all the Spanish people knew, and they could never afford doctors. So they just gave them the, the bitter melon and they got better. And the bitter melon is also good for diabetics. Yeah, yeah, really good. If diabetics and the, the lupina beans I told you for diabetics is like one of the, in Italy, I learned that because it was curing all the people in uh, Italy. It's never a hundred percent cure because you have to still do a, a variety of nutrients to strengthen the organs around that where they had to work extra hard for what was deficient. Your other glands will make up for something that's missing, but you know, if you can give them all the nutrition, then you're balanced and you don't feel tired or moody uh, a lot. Everybody's going to feel it. Everybody feels good for the first two weeks of, of the month. And then the last two weeks, it, you wind down. And that's a cycle. That's it. And you just, but if you eat healthy, you'll get through it better than someone who doesn't eat healthy. Oh, okay. So here's another question I have. When you talk about the colors, are you talking about they not only what how are they supposed to visualize the colors in one? Are they supposed to also wear the colors too? How are they supposed to get these manifest these colors to create this discomfort? Okay, so I, I I go further and I kind of abuse it for my girls' school stuff. And I say, girls, when you go out and you want to meet a guy, if they're wearing rust, don't go out with them. Why? Because when you're real cheap, you'll wear rust. You know, so don't go with them. And then I'll say, if, if a guy's wearing light blue, you know, like he's going to be more kind and loving. If he wears a wild shirt, you know, or something too, where colors are disturbing, he's going to say, you got you to gotta accept my bad side. I'm going to be a little wild myself. You know, the colors reflect your emotions and how you feel. And so it's real clear that color has meanings for a lot of different things and people will wear a color if you if you're really really exhausted uh, you you're going to wear you're not you're going to wear the, 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 the a, a brown color because then you're going to you want to feel safe and or green you want to feel safe like i tell people go to court if you're scared just wear green and you know you'll feel safe and so the colors reflect an emotion. There, there is properties to color because 
the mm -hmm. rainbow is your gift of colors. It's your medicine. It's your psychic medicine. God gave you a rainbow to pick out. Pick a color you need so you'll feel better today. Look, we gave you a pretty rainbow. You can have all the colors. Or you can take one out of there and you'll feel better when you look at us. You know, you look at the rainbow. That's sent from God. That's a beautiful thing that was sent to people. They don't realize. Look at this wonderful gift they got. And so, you, you know, color has a meaning and that makes you learn that they take color serious. I can go into someone's house and from the way they paint the colors, I already know everything about them because it's the color, you, you paint the color you need. And, and then, and like you never paint a baby's room yellow. Never, never, never. You say, oh, but I don't have a boy or a girl. You won't, you won't know, but the baby's gonna pee more when it's in yellow, because yellow stimulates the urinary tract infection, you know. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yellow. yeah, yeah. It, you know, if you have to go to the bathroom, stay away from yellow. <laughs> so color is so much fun when you learn about color. Yes, yes, I agree. I agree. Like, for instance, if we talk about colors, we can talk about the energy of uh, how you attract things. Like, you talk about health, but like we talked about, if you want money, you know, you focus on green, right? So right. You the so and you, you focus want... green going into the palm of your hand, which I told you, you push the middle of your palm of your hand, you push it deep, you push it deep of the hand you write with, not the other one. And, 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 and all of a sudden, your palm, your hand will go, oh, I'm, I'm open for money. And then all of a sudden you're going to get, somebody's going to pay you when they normally didn't pay you or you'll get, something will happen where you're going to attract money and green right. is the best color to think of while you're, you know, reminding you, uh, you'll attract money. It right. clears, so I, it, it, it I, clears I, the psychic so. path. See, psychics know how to abuse their powers. I won 19 numbers in one month. You know, you, it, you know how to, you know how to use color and herbs to make your energy around you special and to win i win a lot of things because i know how to do it with my mind but i also earned it by helping others and when you help others for no other reason that you love to help others like you do Zinga, i mean i mean no, no my, my other girlfriend she does it too and you pastor moses does it and and you, you know it when you help other people and especially a lot of psychics love to help other people. That's why they get troops. They get all this stuff. And they put a lot of colors around them because they know they can pull from that color they need for each person. And, you, you, you know, it's such a, a great power to, to identify. But the truth, the thing is, the, the real spiritual people that just, you don't have to be an angel. You don't have to, you can look cool, cool you can look whatever way you want. But you're in your heart when you enjoy helping others. That is a, that opens your whole chakras up to the to, to the gifts of the universe. Yes, I think we probably end up with a topic talking about how you can manifest things with colors. So you know that okay. would be a good, a good talk about that because colors is very very interesting. So again, um, I'm not sure I got the answer that I was asking. Um, in terms of the color, in it, is we supposed to um um how are we supposed to to do that are we supposed to wear the colors are we supposed to visualize the colors how are we supposed to do it in order to manifest that for our health that to, to, to get the discomfort to get rid of the discomfort it, well just uh because there's all different ways you can get it through jewelry you can get it through crystals you i said you can get a handkerchief uh you could you, you could uh, take a piece of fabric uh you it comes it, it, even you could be in a room and you need a color and you're so bored, but you might all of a sudden focus on the color you need. So the color could pop up anywhere. There's no, there's no uh, rule for uh, how, how do you get the color in you. you there's a hundred million ways. That's why advertisers know the colors on the bottle. The bottles have to have certain colors. There's colors on a bottle no one will buy. And I took advertising in school and that was great for colors because they, they manipulate everybody with their colors on their advertising. So the colors can come in any form. When I go visit someone in the hospital, I always, before I even go in, I either get a handkerchief that color or a piece of fabric that color. And if I can't and, and someone's sick, I grab an orange 
because you put an orange in front of somebody, somehow orange takes away pain. Somehow the, when you focus on orange, your pain kind of like dissolves a little bit. It just lowers the vibration of pain. So try it. You know, try using, try different things. It doesn't matter. It could come in a, a banana will do things for somebody. You know, like oh. the colors. So you saying that the color you need is yellow and orange to, to make you feel better about whatever, then you just can get an orange and a banana and just sit there and focus on those colors, right? Well, whatever color, but not an orange and banana together because they do two different things. Oh, no, okay. No, I said if the, if the colors were orange and yellow, only if those colors were. I'm just using an example. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't usually mix that that I know of in any of the healing stuff. Because a banana does its own thing. No, no, I'm just saying in general. I'm just giving a general. Oh, yeah. You was talking about a plum. And you, I'm sorry, if you're talking about purple and we say a plum and, 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 and orange. Oh, yeah, yeah. So and, do you okay. know that when you make a salad for somebody and you love them and you say, well, I love them, I'm going to throw in a, a plum. And I love them so much and they like the, this, I'm going to throw in that. And by throwing in a variety of things and you're thinking love, that person's going to eat that love you're thinking. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that's that's interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Well, thank you for that. Thanks. For that. So we are going to move into our topic about dreams. Would you mind starting, Pastor Martha? Oh, dreams. That's my favorite. I, I, I love dream interpretation. Um, I've, I've been doing it for a lot of years. I'm pretty good at it. Um, and I, uh, I believe that dreams uh it's another way of your uh your psychic ability you know talking to you you know um so when we dream we have dreams for a lot of different reasons we can have dreams because we had a stressful day and we need to detox our stress in our dreams you know what i mean um we uh we could be angry about something and not really got it out and then you dream about something that you know it, it I, i'll give you an example about a dream i had it's real short um and um, i felt kind of how did i say in real life i had a, a date you know uh with the same guy about three times, you know, and we got a little close the last date, you know, we don't need to get into details, but <laughs> we got a little close the last date. And um, that evening, um, he, uh, he had said he wanted to go to the store to buy some, I think cigarettes or something, and he'll be right back. He did not come back. So I felt a little violated. <laughs> I did. <laughs> so I was angry. <laughs> I was real upset. I'm calling, not picking up the phone, nothing. Okay. So I felt a little violated. But I went to sleep that night and I dreamt um, that I was in a den with lions. And the lions were tearing me up. They was mauling me oh my god it scratched it and they were tearing me up and i woke up and i had a little group where we do a lot of spiritual stuff so i went there and i said hey guys this this what happened and then i had this dream what is this dream saying what is this telling me and everybody had to let me you know do the dream interpretation and it did every you know anonymous anonymously everybody said that you know when you were angry you know what i mean you were felt you felt violated, you know? Uh, and the other, one person actually said that I felt like I wanted to do that to him, but it was more me being angry and feeling violated. And so the dream just acted out the anger. So I felt more at ease the next day after, believe it or not, after I have a dream of lines, you know, doing what they did, I felt better because I think I got it out in my dream. I don't know if that makes any sense. Janet, does that make any sense to you? Yeah. That in the Okay. So that's what happened. I felt much better, believe it yeah. or not. And so our dreams are ways to kind of, they, they, they come in a lot of forms, you know, um, they could come as uh, something to come, premonition, and that's what we're talking about. You know, you could dream that, um, be careful, something is going to happen. You know, I, sometimes I have dreams like that, you know, um, and then I had a friend who had a dream that, you know, she 
needed to be very cautious about something and she did. And uh, she listened when I interpreted it and it didn't happen, thank God. So, but it wasn't really pleasant. So anyway, dreams are a way that I feel the universe, God, the highest source talks to us too. And it's how they, he communicates with us through the dream. So you just gotta pay attention to what these dreams are trying to tell you. Yeah. A lot of dreams are significant. So it's good to write write it down, like have a book. And when you wake up, write down your dream because a lot of times we forget it throughout our days. So write down the details of your dream, you know, and then you could take time to maybe look it up or talk to a, uh, an experienced person, a dream interpreter, and then they'll help you interpret a dream because it might be something you need to pay attention to, you know? So dreams is very important. Go ahead, Janet. What you have to say about that here? Okay, Pastor Moses, I I would like to say that on your dream, first of all, when you there, there's I'm gonna I'm gonna say two things about mine, but I want to say that on that dream that you had, what happens is your higher self says, "Wow, what a bummer what this person did," and I feel awful. So the lions and the lions came along and, rah, 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 and they helped you express this is how I feel. So you don't wake up angry and smash something or break something, or you don't wake up angry that day. You get it out in your dream. Okay, the lions, uh, yeah, was like, I feel so hurt. This is how hurt I feel. And the lions go, rah, 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 rah. so you see, your dream will help you balance your emotions so you don't bring them into your next day. So you could be happy that day. You yeah, have I do. Yeah. And so on um, the two, I have two common dreams that people have always asked me about. And I will tell you that one of the dreams is they always ask me, uh, they, they ask me, do, um, wait, wait more of when, when they have a dream of the, I'm just, I'm, I, my head is going so fast. I got to stop. Uh, uh, Okay. Slow down. Please. Yeah, I have yeah. to slow my brain down. Right. Uh, if you dream of someone that loves you, I mean, you or you have a love dream, and you you wanna you wanna have a person. Oh, well, okay. Let's say you 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 say I love this person very much. I love my aunt. I love my uncle. Oh, I love my relatives. I love my mother and father, but I'm far away. And I just feel all this love for that person. But I had a dream that they died. And I want to know what it means that they're going to die. I don't know, you know, if I should call or not. And I'll say that dream means that you haven't seen them for a long time or talked to that person for a long time. And the, and your higher self is scaring you. You know, they, you know, you could lose them. Don't take them for granted. And then usually that person right away will call them the next day. Uh, and they'll, And then they'll be so happy that they called because the, the, they they know now not to take people for granted. It was a very strong dream for not taking people for granted. Uh, see, so that was one of the, the common ones that they had. And the other one that they, they, that they usually ask for is that they had, they got scared in their dreams. You know, they, they keep get, they're getting scared, something's scaring them. And the scare in the dream is just to warn them that you 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 have to be aware that you're scared, so you can think about how you're going to handle a certain situation, so that you don't it, it's not real. The scare is not real, but it's a warning to say that you have to pay attention to your mindfulness again about how you're handling that situation and you could handle it better if you take the time but if the dream didn't scare you you want to take in the time like oh i my tires on my car i don't know i had a dream that I, they just i had to get a flat well they go out and they don't get a flat but then they go to get a check they say you know you would have got a flat a month from now if you didn't do this so the scare is a lot of times your esp trying to tell you we got to scare you to get you to pay attention that's what that means. Yeah. Wow. I agree. I actually, I remember my friend had his dream um, and it was telling her really about her personality and what she going to do. Isn't that, that's, so I remember she telling me the dream. The part that I remember the most is she's telling me the dream. We were talking about maybe um, starting something, doing maybe doing a business or something, right? And so she said she had the dream and in the dream, um, she was riding a bicycle, 
you know, she's riding a bicycle and she's moving and she's moving freely with the bicycle. She's moving down the block. And all of a sudden it was a big, a, a big uh, a brick wall, a big brick wall came out of the ground, right? And she hit the brick wall head first and landed on her head, right? Mm. She wasn't, wasn't unconscious. She wasn't bleeding or anything like that, but she landed right on her head. And she was she standing. So when I interpret that dream, I told her that you know you think about moving forward, you really do, but you got something that blocks you. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's your thoughts, because it hit you in your head. It's your thoughts. Your because you hit your head and you stop and you just land and you and she was still. So it you know you hit you. you in other words, it stops you the way you think. And you just paralyze. You don't do anything. You don't move forward. You procrastinate. And I said, you need to move out of that. Mm -hmm. And of course, not. And we never move forward with any business because her dream was telling her basically, this is your problem right now that you got going on. You know what I mean? Your thoughts moving forward is very scary to you. You, you know what I mean? You procrastinate. You know what I'm saying? You, you stand in your own way. You know, you got your own stuff that's blocking it. Isn't that something? Yeah. So right. The dream, mm -hmm. So the dream did our own interpretation for her. It was her own psychic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So. They're, they're so helpful dreams for you to help you. They're there to yeah. help. Exactly. So that's another thing that people have to pay attention to is that, again, our dreams are ways of, of, of we getting in touch to, with our high self and our psychic ability. It's the way God talks to us, the universe, high source, whatever, the way they talk to us to give us some information that we would normally not get on an everyday basis, you yeah. know? So dreams is another. So we have three very important um uh, three important, very important things that show you that you have psychic ability, and that's the gut feeling and the intuition, which is one of the same. Mm -hmm. You have that gut feeling and intuition, that mindfulness, and also the dreams. So we all pretty much have that. So pay attention to that. That's your psychic ability. Okay, guys? And then you could just mm -hmm. other ability you really want to get into the arts. Can but I say one more thing about dreams uh, that I, I, before I forget? Uh, well, uh, you know, I, I I got I got this idea from uh, when I was watching uh, TikTok because they always do part one and they never do part two and I went whoa I hate this thing because uh, they never have part two and it's just like my dreams I get up to a good part and it doesn't and it doesn't uh, finish so I said what can I do to get part two for my dreams I want to finish so I found that if I took passion flower at night. Uh, like uh, a couple of drops of passion flower, which is just a clean, safe herb. I can finish my dreams. I get all the scenes. It doesn't stop at scene three. I get part two, four, five, and six. It's the greatest feeling in the world. Okay. I just want to share that tip because it was too good. Oh, oh so you, you take it as a tea in the form of a tea? Well, no, I take a glass of water when in the bathroom when I take my pills, and then I put, I put a, a, a it's, it comes in a dropper, and I put, I put uh, like a half a dropper. It depends, or if I want a longer dream, I put more, and and I I just put it in the water. It's it's it doesn't harm you in any way, and it gives you an if whatever it was, it gives you nice clear dreams, and you wake up feeling, gee, I finished that dream, good. You know, like it was like it, it's not every dream you need to finish, but the ones that I wanted to finish, I was starting to finish, and that was that just get, made me not so you know feeling bad. If, if you have to sleep alone, you you, you want to have some kind of comfort, and that passion flower just gives you the end of the story. I get part two. I call it part two of my dream. Yeah, I haven't had a dream like when I wanted to wake up. I didn't want to wake up. Well, I haven't had that in a long time. You know, the juicy good dreams. I mean, I don't want to wake up. It's so good, and you wake up. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't had that in a while. I mean, I used to love those. I want to go back to slave truck and continue dreaming. You know, those are fun yeah. dreams. Yeah. 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 But I realized that you know, um, people don't know that we all dream. We just don't all remember our dreams. You know, but we all yeah. Dream. Yeah. Great. We have several dreams. We have several different dreams. You know, the REM state, REM, rapid eye movement. You know, this one we're uh -huh. dreaming. But a lot of us don't remember. 
we'll it's not so that. important to remember it because you feel it's like you acknowledged it you it's in your brain you say okay brain take care of it i acknowledge it in my dream now let me go have a good day today that your goal of each day is to find a way to be happy that day no matter what happens find some even if it's appreciation for something that you know someone did for you you have to find some way to be happy that day so you, anything that might make you not too happy you'll get it in your dream wash it away sweep the floor Right, right, just like the lion thing. Yeah, I agree mm -hmm. with you. Yeah. Yeah, that's very important. Yep, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next we're gonna move into the celebrity tip bit and we are going to speak about Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck and we wanted to know, or the audience wants to know, how is their relationship going now? Okay, is, I'm first. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. My apologies. No worries. Is J Lo and Ben Affleck's relationship coming now? Well, I think they're they're having some little feel uh, some little fears i can still feel some fears um i feel like ben affleck is kind of um feeling a sense of um i can't believe this we're back together you know what i mean but yet they don't spend as much time maybe they're doing their own projects you know so they're not spending as much time and it, and then, then there's some insecurity don't want to be cheated on you know had experience being cheated on before, not necessarily with them, with each other in terms of when they were dating before, but then the insecurities going on, you know, don't want to be cheated on. I'm hoping things will go. So there's some insecurities, even though when they're together, they have a great time, they enjoy each other a lot. But when they're not together, I feel like a lot of insecurities pop in. And then I feel like um, JLo, she does really um really look at things and say okay money again is an issue she wants to make sure the money is that she doesn't lose money in this relationship that money is right that money so money is important to her to make sure the financial stability is there it stays there the lifestyle she likes and 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 things of that nature but i feel like they're not without any um problems it's more insecurity more of that insecurity that they have a little bit more of it in terms of you know, don't want to be hurt and cheated on, you know. Thank you, Pastor Moses. And the same question for Janet. How is their relationship going now? They're, they are trying both very hard to get along and to enjoy each other and be grateful for a second chance. But uh, two things different. One is that she feels as she's getting older, she wants someone that just really loves her for her now, not just for her glamour and her 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 ways, just for her, you know, her wrinkles and anything else that she's gonna feel. She doesn't have that same energy as a young person, and so kind of in the background, she'll have, she'll see who really loves her and who may later on, if this doesn't work, that she'll have someone there that will love her for her. And, and and just have a quieter life and you know no you know, she doesn't even have to go on stage anymore she just has someone love being around her that would be fun for her and they can go places and have a more quieter life she she is she is not she's very afraid of being alone as she gets a little older on the other hand ben also has his side people because he's seeking someone that's much more submissive and that would do everything for him that he wants because he also is getting older but he he doesn't have that energy to keep up with someone and he just wants someone that will accept whatever he does wherever he goes and he'll love her and it'll be someone he has to love and he'll make sure that this is someone that loves him the most even though she won't be as glamorous she won't be uh she'll be more just a, a, a person that he feels really needs him as a man that's it 
Thank you, Janet. That was very interesting. And the final question is, will they go forward and get married? Pastor Malthus, would you mind starting off? Hmm. Well, well, she is not. She's second guessing it. I kind of feel energy around her second guessing this. She's not really sure that um, that marriage is going to work. She doesn't think it's going to work long time. She's questioning it. I should say she's questioning it. I feel like um, they still have some issues around the past that's not resolved. I can feel like whatever, when they broke up, I don't think they broke up um, on good terms. I do think that there was some anger going on there. Um, I'm not sure if they talked throughout the years or how often they did, but I didn't feel like it's on great terms that they broke up. So I feel like there's still some anger issues. Again, I can feel, and I can feel like their, their, um, their romantic life you know, it's more laid back. It's a little different. I don't feel like it's the same as it was before as passionate, but I guess when they were younger, it's more laid back now. And then I'm not feeling like they're on the same, you know, sexual plane, you know, they're on the same level. Um, so I can feel there's some disappointments. I can feel that she's not always um, feeling like it's going to work. And I can feel there's some adjustments that need to be made. Um, when I look at if they're going to get married, I'm not sure they will. Um, right now, I feel like it's more like in the fantasy stage, you know, thinking about this is something that you want to do. They both in line with the fantasy part of it. But in reality, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I'm going to have to go with, I, I don't think so, because I don't actually see it. I see it's more in the fantasy stage. It might just be a long engagement, and I might have to look at it later on down the road, but it doesn't seem like they're going to get married at this moment. Thank you. And the same question for Janet. Will they go forward and get married? She really, really wants to get married and she wants it to work. But because of uh, too many things going on, just like uh, Pastor Moses said, they there is so much going on that it's not quite the right timing to, to get married. She might plan it and hope for it. However, there's still a chance that I see later in life when they're older, they'll come back together again one more time and get married. Hmm. Interesting, okay. Yeah, that's then, very interesting. Yeah, because I think they're in their 50s now, right? So it, now, yeah, it would have to be like from 67, 68, 70, 72, you know, like that, you know, like older. Then they come back and then everything's wonderful. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I do think that I agree with you. I don't think that the marriage looks like it's going to happen at this moment. If it does, like I said, it might be a long engagement or like you said, might have to come back. So right now I think it's the fantasy of wanting to do it. I don't think reality that she feels like it's going to work out. So I'm not sure if they're going to get married at this point. I would have to say no. Oops. It's two roller coasters still. If the roller coaster's got to go into a very slow bus. Right. Cool. Thank you. So that, those are all of the questions I do have for you guys, including topics and the general. If you guys do have any takeaways, you can, you know, also go into that. I just want to um, I just want to do a uh, recap on stuff like, OK, if anybody interested in the reading, it's five dollars for Janet. And if you want me as well, it'll be five dollars for Janet per question. And also I would do it for free if you like. Uh, if you like and uh, uh, sorry, like, subscribe and share my channel. That is Psychic Four, spelled F-O-U-R, like the number four lovers. Um, uh, if you definitely subscribe to my channel, I can definitely give you the same question you would ask Janet for $5. And I thank you all for joining us. 
Also, Janet has a book at, out called, and it'll be ready in about, it's on back order, it'll be ready in about two months. It's how to screw up your baby. And she talked about in her book, different things that you as a new mother, or I guess a father too, right, Janet? Maybe new mother, new father, yeah. right? Yes. yes new mother, new father, um, having a new baby, what the things that you shouldn't do so the baby will have long-term psychological issues, you know, emotional psychological issues that affect their lifetime, for their lifetime. So things that you don't want to do that will make your baby turn into an adult that has, you know, some issues that they need to work on or pay a psychiatrist. And you could avoid all that by getting her book. I think a book is, uh, if I if I recall, I think it's twenty nine ninety nine or something like that. Um, twenty two. Twenty two ninety nine, and, and it's on back order. Uh, so if you want to order her book, you have to uh, go to her. Well, you have to go to her, her email, which is Brooklyn Jim at yahoo.com. Brooklyn is abbreviated as B K L Y N, Jim like when you go to the gym to work out, uh, G Y M at yahoo.com and just let them know you're interested in the book. Please let me know when it's ready and whatnot and leave your email and your telephone number and she will get back to you with that book. We are going to be on every Saturday. We're going to try to make every Saturday at 2 p.m. Please tell your friends. Please tell everybody, friends, family, have everybody join because we have so much stuff to talk about. We are very experienced. I've been in this field for 30 years. Janet been in there 40 plus. She's been on over 100 TV shows, you know, like David Letterman, Sally Jeffrey Raphael, um, Regis and Regis, all I know is going to say Regis, but she's been in so many shows and she can tell you some of the shows she can be in. You can look her up. Um, so she's what we call the TV psychic. So, and I've been doing my readings. I do my readings on, um, on, um, online I'm with uh, with uh, different uh, uh, places like Keen, you know, I was doing live advice. I was doing Kasamba. Um, I did Five Star Psychic. I did, uh, uh, let me see, I did, uh, I did some uh, psychic uh, lines that was in Australia, some in England. You know, I've done over, I think I've done over 100,000 readings. Janet also did like over 100,000 readings. My accuracy is pretty high as well as Janet. Um, Amanda is one of my clients and she's also our moderator. Um, so if you're, you know, we, we have experience. We definitely have experience. We both do our personal readings. So I'm Psychic for Lovers. You can look at, I have my website. You can look me up if you want a personal reading. Janet, she also, you can just go to uh, Janet's G, uh, email that I just told you. Say, I would like a reading. I would like to schedule a reading, how much it costs, blah, blah, blah. And leave your phone number and she will get back to you. So we all do schedule, sorry, we do personal readings. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Y'all have a blessed day.